Yep. In this demonstration, we will be covering the repair parts for the Model F1 and F2 drive pipe valves. The Model F1 and F2 drive pipe valves are available in sizes 3 inch, 4 inch, and 6 inch. Before working on the F1 or F2 dry pipe valves, refer to the appropriate technical data sheet for placing the system out of service. The replacement parts offered for the 3 inch through 6 inch model F1 and F2 dry valves can be found in Viking's replacement parts book or on the technical data sheets. The most current information can be found on the replacement parts book or technical data sheet on our website. There are two repair kits available for the Model F1 and F2 dry valves, as well as individual parts. The two repair kits offered are the clapper assembly kit and the member assembly kit. When you order the clapper assembly kit, it comes pre-assembled. The parts included on the clapper assembly kit are the clapper assembly, the rubber retainer screw, the rubber retainer, and the clapper rubber. The parts included in the member assembly kit are the cover gasket, the cover bolts and the bolts used to assemble the base to the housing, the clapper arm assembly, the clapper arm assembly rod, the clapper assembly rod, the clapper assembly, the hook rod, the hook assembly, the air plate, the diaphragm, the spring, the six retainers that go on each of the rods, the air seat, the diaphragm retainer, the screws used for the diaphragm retainer, the clapper rubber, the rubber retaining ring, and the rubber retainer screw. The parts that are offered individually are the cover, the cover gasket, the rubber retainer screw, the rubber retainer, the clapper rubber, the socket set screw, the latch, the latch pin, and the bolts that are used for the cover and to assemble the base to the housing. To replace the clapper rubber or the clapper assembly, you will first need to remove the bolts from the cover of the dry valve. Do this by using the dry valve wrench or a socket wrench. At first, just back the bolts off from the cover slightly. This is done to ensure that there is no water or air trapped behind the valve. Once you have the cover bolts backed off a little ways, you can break the seal of the cover. Once the seal is broken, you can now remove the rest of the bolts from the cover. With each of the bolts removed, the cover and the cover gasket can now be removed from the valve. As you can see, the clapper assembly is still in the latch position held closed by the hook assembly. In order to replace the clapper rubber or the clapper assembly, you will need to release the hook from the latch. To do this, slide the dry valve resetting tool or the dry valve wrench through the hook rod until it hits the stop on the clapper arm. To release the clapper, you can apply a sharp downward force to the hook assembly to release it. In this demonstration, we will show the replacement of the clapper rubber, the clapper assembly, and the latch pin with the valve taken out of the system. In order to actually replace the clapper rubber, clapper assembly, or the latch pin, the valve can be left in the riser with just removing the cover plate. Prior to working or repairing any of the parts inside of the valve, 
you will want to place something inside the valve that will cover the inlet. In order to replace either just the clapper rubber or the entire clapper assembly, you will need to remove the existing clapper assembly from the valve. To do this, you will need to take one hand and put it up inside the valve and with your thumb push up on the latch. At the same time, you are going to want to pull down on the clapper assembly and hold it in place. To remove the clapper assembly from the clapper arm, you will need to remove the retaining ring from one side of the clapper rod. In order to do this, you can use a flat tool to get underneath the retaining ring to pull it off of the clapper rod. Remove the retaining ring from the clapper rod. Once this is done, you can push the clapper rod out from the clapper arm assembly enough to remove the clapper assembly from the clapper arm. In order to replace the clapper rubber, you will need to remove the rubber retaining screw from the rubber retainer. Once the screw is removed, the rubber retainer can now be removed, as well as the clapper rubber itself. When installing the new clapper rubber, make sure that the flat side of the clapper rubber is facing down towards the clapper assembly and the side with the raised edge is facing up to fit inside of the rubber retainer. At this point we can reinstall the rubber retaining screw. Now whether you are just replacing the clapper rubber or the complete clapper assembly, you can now replace them back in the valve. We can now reinstall the clapper assembly with the new clapper rubber back into the valve or install the new clapper assembly into the valve. To do this, you will need to release the clapper arm assembly by pushing your thumb up on the latch and holding it down. Also verify that the clapper rod is out of the way so that you can line up the holes of the clapper assembly with the holes in the clapper arm. Once you got the holes of the clapper arm assembly lined up with the clapper assembly, you can push the clapper rod back through until it comes out the other side so that it is set in place. At this point, you will now need to reinstall the retaining ring onto the end of the clapper rod while holding the clapper arm assembly down. At this point, you can now reset the drive valve by once again using your thumb to lift up on the latch and pull down the clapper arm assembly. Insert the dry valve resetting tool or the dry valve wrench through the hole in the hook assembly until it meets the stop on the clapper arm. By applying a sharp upward force, the dry valve will be reset. You can now replace the cover and the cover gasket onto the valve. Line up the holes and replace the screws.